Welcome back, this is part two. We are now looking at how to graph equations in slope intercept form if they were originally in standard form. So we're changing them from standard form to slope intercept form. You can use the table method. I showed you how to graph using the table method. You just plug an X, a zero in for X, plug a zero in for Y, and you have your two ordered pairs. You just put a line through them and you're done. Uh, this method here, we are changing it into slope intercept form because we know how to graph that, all right? Let's take this equation here. Let's take negative 2x plus 5y equals negative 15. Okay. We've got to get the y by itself. So what I encourage students to do is put y equals down there at the bottom. It's like this is what we're trying to get at. Like This is what we're looking for. We're looking for it to say y equals, and then we're going to have our, our, our the rest of our equation, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get rid of this negative 2x, which is on the left-hand side. We want to get rid of what is furthest away from this y that it's on, to make it not by itself. Like right now, the y is not by itself because it's being multiplied by 5, and we're adding negative 2x to it. You know, we want, it's kind of like we're doing the order of operations. We're just doing them in reverse since we're solving for a variable here, okay? We're not simplifying expressions. So we're going to add 2x to this side. The only thing that is new about this, y'all, is that we have an x right here. All right, if there wasn't an x, if that just said negative 2, y'all would know exactly what to do. You'd add 2 to both sides. The other little kicker here is that we can't combine 15 and positive 2x, or negative 15 and positive 2x. All right, it, like you can't combine that together, together and get negative 13x or whatever. All right, those are apples and oranges. You can't combine them together. So we're going to put what is left on the left-hand side just right down here. You're going to bring down the 5y. All right, this is just basic algebra. All right. Negative 2x, you add the 2x to the other side, that, that cancels out. So it's kind of like saying now 0 plus 5y. We don't, you know, we don't need to put plus 0 right there. All right? 2x, it's positive. We're going to bring it to the front. There no, there's no need to put a plus sign in the front of that 2x because it's an understood. But it is, is not understood that a negative sign is in front of the 15, so we do need to bring that down right here. It's like saying 2x minus 15. Okay? The y is still not by itself. We got that times 5 right there. We got to get rid of that times 5, and the opposite of multiplying by 5 is dividing by 5. So we're going to divide both sides by 5. All right? The 5s cancel out. 5 divided by 5 is not 0. It's 1. It's like giving us 1y, or just y. All right? So those cancel out. 2x divided by 5 and then negative 15 divided by 5. You got to divide both terms by 5. So 2 divided by 5, well, it's going to give us a fraction, and it's this simplified all the way, so we're going to leave it as 2 over 5, and then bring your x down with it, okay? And y'all have seen this before. Your graph is already in uh, rise over run, okay? So it, it looks hard. It's actually a lot easier than if it was a whole number, all right, in order of graphing. So you have 2 divided by 5, which is just 2 fifths. If that said 2 divided by 6, you'd have to simplify the fraction down, which is not 3. It's 1 over 3. All right? Negative 15 divided by 5. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. 15 divided by 5 gives us negative 3. And we know how to graph it from there. All right? I'm going to get my point here. Our m value is 2 over 5. Our b value is 3, excuse me, negative 3. That's a big difference. So we're going to put a point on the y-axis here at negative 3. Right there, dude. And then the m value, or the, uh, yeah, the m value is 2 over 5. Rise 2, run 5. There's your next point. There we go. And now we're just going to put a line through them. We could go down 2 into the left 5. We could, for starting at B, we could go up 2 into the right 5. You know, this gives me a very straight line, so I don't need to do all that. But, you know, if you didn't have this tool, um, you might want to put as many points on that graph as possible so your line is as straight as possible. Okay. There we go. All right. So that is how we graph an equation that is in standard form in slope intercept form, okay? So let's try this one right here. Uh, this is a good one, all right. 
So we'll get a new one of these guys. How's it going today? Drohans, you doing okay, buddy? You told me to give you a shout out my my next video. This is it. Hope you're making good decisions there, Drohans. I believe in you. All right. Let's look at this one. We have y minus 2x equals. How come this one looks different? Well, it's not written in standard form. Standard form is AX plus BY. This has your Y coming in front of your X. So it's not written in standard form. However, you could get it there very easily. You could put the negative 2X in the front and the positive Y in the back, and it would be negative 2X plus Y equals negative 3. You know, we're just we're trying to get the Y by itself. And how come it's not by itself is we're subtracting 2X. Well, if we just add 2X to both sides, it's done. So we're going to add 2X to this side. What we do to one side, we do to the other. And if you remember, this 2x is going to go in the front. And this negative 3 is going to go in the back. Now, how this one is different from the last one is you don't have a number that is in front of y. Or you do. It's like an understood 1. But if you divided both sides by 1, it's not changing any. So here's your equation, y equals 2x minus 3. That was just a little bit different in the sense that you did not have a number in front of the y. Could you do the table method there? Absolutely. In fact, the last test y'all took was on the 7th. And I will give you bonus points if you could tell me what are some pros and cons of using this method right here. You know, what are some pros and cons if we were to use the table method? Let's just take this, this exact equation right here. I want you to tell me why it's a good idea to use the slope-intercept form method for this equation, this one right here. Why would we want to use slope-intercept method and not use the table method, like when x is 0, what is y? Like, maybe just play it out a little bit. Try using the table method. See what happens, you know? See if you can get, come up with an answer. If you could tell me why it would be, make more sense to do the slope-intercept form here, or why it would be easier. That's, a, that's actually what I'm asking. Why is it easier to do the sl change this in a slope-intercept form than it would be to put in the tables 0 is x? Now, would you get the answer wrong if you did it the table method? No. It's just a little bit easier to put it in slope-intercept form. Okay? Uh, you guys, I believe in you. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. If you have any questions, I'll uh, answer those in class, okay? This is does get confusing. If you're not 100% on it, though, don't worry. We'll get there, all right? Keep it up. I believe in you. See you, draw hands.